I'd like to say something. Julie, come here a minute. We love you. We are so blessed by you. More than you know. You are so anointed by God to do exactly what you're doing. So give him some praise in his house. Amen. Thank you for all that you do. Yes. I, I, why, why do you say that, Pastor? Because y'all have no idea, and she has no idea what I'm preaching today. But she has nailed every song to go with what's going on today. Amen? Amen. Only God can do that. How many here know what I'm going to preach today? Jonathan's the only one. And that's only because he has to have graphics. <laughs> graphics. I need some graphics, Pastor. I need some graphics. I need some graphics that ain't going to mess up the, it, 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 make all these things sh blare and stuff. We're going to talk about that in just a second, too. But I, but I am here with a heavy heart this morning. And um, most of y'all know Tony Fowler that played drums for us for 17 years. Went home to be with the Lord last night. He passed on and he was playing a gig and with Randy. That's why Randy's not here this morning as well. And um, after they got through, they were breaking everything down and Tony went to the bathroom and never came back and they found him in the bathroom and he'd had a massive heart attack and, and went home to be with the Lord, which is not a, as Janine and I talked this morning, not a bad thing. I, I do know for a fact that he's saved. I led him to the Lord. I baptized him in the freezing ice water. I know he went down cold and came up cold. Amen. Because I was cold too. I was trying to stand on the outside and do it. And nobody let me. Made me get in that horse trough with him. And um, I, I want to take up a love offering for, for the family. Uh, Tony served us for, like I say, for 17 years faithfully. He had to retire because he got to where two services a week was more than he could um, do. And he had, matter of fact, just had talked about not even doing gigs and stuff anymore because it's taking everything out of him. And, and Tony was only 65. And, and I encourage every one of you here, if you don't have your affairs in order, please get your affairs in order for the family. You know, what can we do for Tony and his family right now? We can sow into to their life, be generous to them, because, you know, they, he wasn't prepared for this. And unfortunately, I, I preach this because I went and got mine in, in order. Dorothy and I went down together, took care of everything, got all that together. I know where I'm going. I know what's going on. I, I know what's going to happen when I'm out of here. Amen. My kids are not going to have to toil, and my kids are not going to have to worry about that, and it's not going to be a burden on my grandkids or nobody else because I've already took care of that. Please, I, I so encourage you, if you do not have that taken care of, please do so. That is important, guys. It's not right to our children to leave that burden to them. And i got to say one thing my dad did for us. He, he took care of his stuff. My mom didn't, and that was a whole other. So I, I've been on both sides of that, and, and it's um, so please do. And I, I'm going to ask the ushers to come and we're going to take up a, a love offering for them to, to kind of help bless them financially and lift some of the burden off of them. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. As we sow into, into someone else's life, you said what we make happen for somebody else, you'll make happen for us. And God, we just give you praise right now that, that Tony is definitely in the presence of his savior that we have the hope of that we have the reassurance of and now father i ask for peace for the family i ask that the holy spirit just just wrap your arms around that family and and comfort them and we just ask that god that you get the praise and you get the glory and that that there be joy let there be peace that passes all understanding. 
and we give you thanks in advance. And all of God's children said, Amen. Somebody give God praise. I want to, I want to press pause today a little, and, from a normal church as usual, and I want to talk from my heart just a little bit. And today's message is living not afraid, because I'm gonna be honest with you. I think that there's a lot of fear over the last several years. That well, ever since 9/11, to be honest with you, America has been attacked with fear and riddled with fear of uncertainty and and what's going on in this world amen um i want to speak directly today to what life springs plans are i i can't make long-term plans right now because we don't know what's going on they're talking another mass shutdown and 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 so on and so forth with this COVID and and everything, which, okay, we're not going to plan. But what we are fixing to do, we're going back to church as usual. It's time. <coughs> we started today. We 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 opened the nursery up today for first time, and um, for for the babies, we're fixing to. We got our ushers back. We need some greeters. I'm, I'm, I'm going here because now everybody needs to figure out where they're going to get plugged in at. Amen? And we need greeters. We need to get the church back full function, full operation. I hope in the near future we're going to go back to Wednesday night services. And um, unless you've been hiding under a rock somewhere, Things has been crazy. Never dreamed in my my whole life that something could just shut the church down, halt the church. And I'm going to be honest with you. We weren't prepared for this. I don't know of many pastors that were, were prepared for this. I mean, I had people get mad at me because I wouldn't make a decision right away because I didn't know what to do. And that's okay, right? I, I didn't know what to do. Didn't know, didn't know how to handle what was going on. I mean, COVID is real. And it is killing people. Amen? And, and, and I feel that we've come a long ways now to, to understand that it is and that we're all smart enough. Somebody say smart enough. because and, and I want you listening by live stream today too. We're all smart enough that if we got symptoms, we would stay home. Amen? It's okay. You're not going to go to hell because you missed one Sunday. Okay? We got symptoms, we'd stay home. If, if we think by any chance, maybe we've been affected, we would stay away. Amen. I think we're in a place now that we, we've been around this today and long enough, and the question would have to be asked, Pastor, what are we supposed to do with this? I mean, it's crazy. Would you ever have dreamed that you couldn't get toilet paper on Amazon? <laughs> of all things that I would not think of, I would have think beans and rice, chicken, cow. Come on, y'all. <laughs> but it, we know that things have been really crazy and it's even getting crazier to the point where people are panicking today and I mean the stock market is dropping and, and, and people are panicking. So what should we do about it? That's the question. What should we do about it? Just not worry about it at all? And just go on with life as usual? I, I believe that's underreacting. Amen? I think we should use 
the common sense that God gave us. And, and to be honest with you, I don't think we need to run out and buy extra stuff, you know, like toilet paper or hide in the house and prepare for the end of the world. Amen? Somebody say, not afraid. I'll be honest with you, I, I don't pretend to be an expert. I don't know where this is going. Like I say, they're talking about now another major shutdown of, of schools and, and, and I'm sure churches that are included in it, although they're not going to put church in there because then, you know, then we're being prejudiced against uh, faith-based, or faith-based organizations. So, but it's coming. Amen? But I'm going to speak today from my perspective. Amen? And um, life is crazy, y'all. It is. When professional sporting events are shut down, conferences are shut down, you're expected to wear a mask to work. And it's okay to carry a gun, put a mask on, and go into a bank. Life has changed. Amen? It's crazy when you go into a grocery store and, and the things that we used to skip, now is they're out of it. Amen? So what do we do? We run in fear and stockpile and, and, and just, I mean, fill our cabinets up with beans and rice and and just live and hide in, inside and not come out? First thing I need to let you know today, don't make any long-term decisions. That's important. We're not going to make long-term decisions. But this is one thing I am going to say boldly. Being as we got caught without any knowledge of what to do. See, boy, our God is good. He gives you wisdom and he gives you knowledge. And, and let me tell you something. It doesn't matter if they shut down every church in America. They cannot shut the mouth of God in no way, shape, form, or fashion. We will here at Life Spring, if they shut it down, we will on purpose, on purpose become one of the greatest leading, y'all hear me now, online ministries that you've ever seen. Let me tell you something. These guys have worked endless hours, countless hours to make these things go on. Can I tell you something? Then we find out our little guys can do more on it than we can. A amen. So, I mean, there's going to be some changes. I mean, they've even got to where they, they're halfway making me look good. And I've always said I got the face for radio. Y'all help me. <laughs> they got video going good. We're going, listen, right now, we're getting hits all over the country today. Right now, there's people watching us all over. I mean, out, out of, as a matter of fact, we've had a few out of country. But we're, we're getting people to hear the gospel. And this is one thing that Facebook says about our stuff, that we have great content. That, that, to me, that's pretty good. We got great content. And, and I think it's because their drummer is so good. I don't know. That's, that's our content. Amen. <laughs> I mean, we're just going, we're going to share Jesus with anybody. I, I got a, this phone call at 2.30 this morning, and, and, and to be honest, it wasn't a phone call I wanted to hear. But I've been busting all week, all week, to tell you about another phone call I got. All week. Jonathan don't even know this. My daughter don't even know this. I've been all week with this bottled up inside going Sunday's coming Sunday's coming I'm it's Sunday now I get a phone call the other day from a 
number that I hadn't seen in quite some time. And the reason I know the number is because uh, I, I did some counseling with this person's daughter with drugs. We got her into a re rehab, doing real good. I've always said you're never going to change an addict until you get an addict out of their environment. As long as they can run to what's familiar, they'll go right back. Amen. I know this firsthand. So we got her out of state. Did good. Been clean for a couple years now. Doing real good. Got involved with this little young knucklehead boy. And that phone call was daddy saying, Mark, I want you to know you saved my daughter's life. I said, saved your daughter's life? He said, yeah, she's been watching you every week. I said, okay. She said, and you spoke to her when she was thinking of ending everything. I said, what? See, God is not limited by buildings. He's not limited by nothing. I'm like, I said, I need y'all to come give a testimony of this. And, and they may before it's over with. But right now there's some healing that's got to take place and some things that's got to. And she gets on the phone with me and she's crying. Because can I tell you how I minister to her? Most of you would not like the way I ministered to her. Most of y'all would say I'm mean and I'm cruel because I'm hard. I sat and I listened to this little young girl give me her sob story. Oh, how pitiful and how poor and how, how blah, 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 blah life's been. And she was then going on to tell me how heroin and, and meth together, there's about the only way she could get high anymore. And she was young. I said, huh. I said, okay. Mom and Daddy came back, and they came in to sit down with us. And I said, is it okay that I speak openly to your daughter? Yeah. I said, okay. I said, How do you, where do you see yourself in five years from now? She said, never really thought about it. I said, so you have no five-year plan. You don't know what five years is going to look like to in your life. No. Y'all pardon me for a moment while I get beside myself. I said, let me tell you what I see for you in five years from now. If you don't ch change. If you don't accept the change within you. Five years from now, I see you walking the streets. Weighing about 95 pounds with sores and bumps all over your face. Nasty. Probably got hepatitis C. Might even have a whole bunch of other stuff to go with that. Because what's happening right now is you're pretty, you're cute. So the dope man's giving you everything that you want. But you're having to give him something in return. I said, then what's going to happen is when all the pretty goes away, then you're going to be passed on to their friends. And then when their friends is done with you, now you're going to have to go out here and you have to peddle yourself up and down the street to get your next fix. And mama looked up over her glasses at me and I thought, oh, Lord, here we go. She's fixing to smack me. And finally, the mama's tear run down her face. She said, baby, he's telling you the truth. That's what's going to happen to you. What's the five-year plan? That day she made a decision. And that day she held to it. And the thing that daddy got to tell me the other day was I finally got to hold my baby girl for the first time in almost 10 years. I held her through this. I cried with her. I prayed with her. And I remember the words that you said, and I reminded her, what's your five-year plan? This boy ain't worth it. This boy is not worth it. This boy is not worth it. Do you understand? This boy is not worth it. And then you get online and say, this boy is not worth it. Can I tell you something? 
we will, as a church, always lead by the leading and prompting of the Holy Spirit. If the Spirit prompts, we lead. Amen? And what's amazing is, that Sunday morning I had felt in my spirit that God wanted to do something mighty. Then I walk in and I go to the bathroom and Todd comes in and says, I got to tell you something. God told me something and he just reaffirmed it. Everything I had going on my, in my spirit, I'm like, oh, Lord. Tell Jonathan. <laughs> and everybody said, but our project here at Life Spring is to push the gospel out any way we can get it out. At whatever cost. I said we'll do anything short of sin to win somebody to the kingdom of God. Amen. We'll do anything that it takes to win somebody to Christ. It's about building the kingdom. God's kingdom. Somebody say God's kingdom. Amen. And when panic comes, fear is riddled in our lives. And I want to talk today not about not afraid. And I want to emphasize on the word not. And everybody said, we were told in the word of God that we're not of this world. Somebody say not we're not of this world. We might be in it, but we're not of this world. Paul told us that we're not to be conformed to this world. Somebody say not. We're not to be conformed. Amen. We're, we're, we're not to, to live like people that have no hope. We're not to live like people who have no hope. Because why? We're different. And everybody says, yeah, we are, Pastor. Uh, I tell every, people all the time, we're different. You ought to see, meet our pastor. He's different. Amen. Uh, amen. I am. I, I, I've been delivered from being a pastor. I am a messenger of God, a messenger of God's word. I, I've been delivered of what people think about me. <laughs> Y'all help me. And delivered the suits. Hallelujah. I, 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 three ways we're not like this world if y'all taking notes today. Number one, we live by faith and not by fear. We live by faith and not by fear. Well, that ain't what the Bible says, Pastor. The Bible says we live by faith and not by sight. But sight is fear. Y'all with me? We don't live by fear. We don't allow fear to drive us. In John's Gospel, chapter 14, when Jesus was confronting his disciples, he says, Peace I live, leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not, somebody say not, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Amen. I love the way the New Living Testimony, uh, Testament translates this. What's this? I am leaving you with a gift, a peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. See, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Some of you need that gift today. Some of you need to receive that gift today, that, that gift of peace. Well, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if it don't, what if? Somebody say not. He, he commanded us not to live afraid. If you're living in a place where it's total turmoil and there's total chaos and, and there's total unsettledness in your life, it's because you're not trusting in God. And the church said, this peace that he's talking about here is that peace that goes beyond human understanding. Peace that you, can't in, you cannot muster it up yourself. Peace. Not peace that, that more money will give you. 
So I love that one. I mean, I'm going to hit that hard today. It's, it's going to nail that one in the head. More money's not going to give you more peace. I, I know some wealthy people that don't have peace. I watched my uncle drink himself to death, multimillionaire, drank himself to death because he didn't have peace. He didn't have that peace. See, see, you can be broken full of peace, and you can be, you can have nothing and be full of peace. Y'all ain't with me today. You, you don't, more money's not going to buy you nothing but more troubles, more problems. Somebody say peace. You know, couldn't you imagine God sitting in heaven and this COVID virus came, <laughs> and he, it just totally caught him off guard? You know, because he was watching over here in the Middle East where they was getting some peace treaty signed, and he missed it. Come on, y'all. Can you imagine God saying, well, I didn't see this coming. I don't know what to do now. No, nothing has ever caught our God off. Never. Never has anything ever caught him off guard. See, our God is faithful. Our God is in control. He is good all the time. Y'all with me? Our God has a plan. Y'all with me? Well, I, I don't see it. Can I tell you something? Almost everything I've ever done in faith with for God, I didn't see the plan, but he already had the plan laid out ahead of me. Amen. Last, uh, last Sunday when I showed up, I didn't know I was going to talk to a, woman, a little girl that's fixing to kill herself. Y'all Y'all with me? Almost every plan that you have, if you're wise, give God the eraser and let him erase it. Amen? The Bible declares that he will never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. Nothing that's going on in this world today, nothing has caught him off guard. Paul told his student Timothy in 2 Timothy in, in seven, uh, 1 7, he says, For God has not, somebody not, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, but of love and self discipline. Who needs to hear that again? For God has not given you, ma'am, you, sir, the spirit of fear. He's given you the power of love, the power of self-discipline. Woo. Oh, we're going to talk about some stuff here in a minute. Mm. Somebody say, we're not panicking. We're not panicking. This too shall pass. Amen. This too shall pass. For we live by faith and not by sight. We live by faith and not fear. Number two, if you're taking notes, we're, we're sacrificial, not selfish. Help me. Philippians 2 and 3 and 4, Paul's speaking to the believers of Philippi at this time. And he, verse 3, he says, uh, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. Imagine during the early church, because you've got to realize this was the early church. Man, the early church was, was going through some serious persecution. Amen? They were facing death by declaring Jesus as their Savior. They, they were... They were Man, they were imprisoned by their faith. And here Paul is telling them, <laughs> look here, quit being selfish. How are we going to reach a dying world when we, the believers in faith, run to Walmart and buy them out of toilet paper? Come on. See, they didn't go run into the Jerusalem Mega Mart and stock up. And Paul's telling them, you know, listen, it ain't about emergency supplies. 
the beans and rice right now is thinking of others. How can we be, how can we reach other people when we're supposed to be the light of this world? How? When we reach out to somebody in need. Man, there's, there's a lot of people in need right now. I didn't say handouts, I said hand ups. I'm going to clarify that real clear. Hand ups, not hand out. Hello, everybody say. Because there's some people out there that's made their whole life and career out of hand outs instead of hand ups. And I'm going to be honest with you, all of us at some time or another need a hand up. Acts chapter 2 and verse 44, uh, the Bible says, All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. See, the early church, even though they were going through their persecutions and, and their problems, they always looked out for the people around them. And everybody said, Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. How many of you know that's when revival broke out? I said, how many of you know that's when revival broke out, that the religious folks are even talking about them? Man, they must be drunk at 3 o'clock in the day. But they all out here laid out on the floor uh, speaking in tongues and, and, and everything else, y'all. Y'all with me today? Here they are. But, but watch. They weren't greedy. They were, they were selfless. They, they were thinking of others before themselves. That's vital, guys key here I want us to hear this today the devil wants to shut the mouth of God that is his job since the fall at the garden ever since Lucifer was kicked out of heaven and one third of the angels followed they have tried to shut the mouth of God as we know as the end days near the enemy's job is to shut the mouth of the church if he can shut the mouth of the church then he has full reign my bible says there's coming a moment in the twinkling of an eye he, we're going to be called up out of here then he'll have full reign for a thousand years on this earth full reign without the holy spirit the holy spirit be taken to I don't want to be here for that. Amen. I don't know about you. I don't want to be. See, some people think it's tough right now. You ain't seen tough. When the mm, Somebody say, we are the body of Christ. And I love this because he said that they continued to meet together. How often? Daily. Daily. They broke bread. Daily. We should all have a daily going on in our life. Uh, again, I think if you know that you've got some exposures and, and you, maybe you got some symptoms, you shouldn't come to church. But other than that, you ought to be in the house of God. Well, I, 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 I might get, I mean, you know how old I am? I might get COVID. Let me tell you what Paul says. I'm not going to tell you Mark said. Paul said, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. To die is gain. So you mean to tell me just go tempt faith? No, use wisdom. Don't get all up in everybody's face. And we, I know we like to hug around here and, 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 and we love each other. I'm going to tell you something. I, there's nothing in this world I would trade for any one of you guys. I love y'all. I, I mean, when we was isolated and couldn't come to church, I was jonesing, y'all. Some of y'all don't understand jonesing, but I, I was jonesing. I mean, I mean, I was having withdrawals. I, I thought I was going to have to go pastor missing his sheep <coughs> deliverance classes. I ain't lying. I was talking to myself. God didn't create me to be by myself. I will talk to my dog. Some of y'all go, well, I talk to mine all the time. 
Yeah, but it, the bad part about it is I thought he was answering. <laughs> we got pretty good there. Amen. He says that they came together daily and broke bread. God, pray with your families. Have you something going on to be in the Word of God? Every day, not some day, not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesday when pastors online. Every day, have something. Watch, it's in, it's vital. How many in this place eat one time a week? We don't. I would starve to death. Y'all would have to come to Phoebe to get me. Steve would be over there giving me an IV. One meal a week? We'll feed this fleshly man three, four, six, ten times a day. And then expect our spirit man to live on one meal a week. Sometimes, that's if we feel good. Church said. And then we wonder why we're weak in our faith when Paul tells us in, in Romans 10, 17, for faith cometh but by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That is important that we are created in God's image and likeness and we're to be in fellowship with one another. It is important that we meet daily. Daily. The writer of Hebrews says, when you see these days approaching, when you see these end times coming, and they're coming, y'all. Forsake not the assembling of yourself as some. It's important. Why? To build our faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. We don't walk in fear. We walk in faith. Fear tolerated. Is faith what? Contaminated. Fear contaminates our faith. And, and all through the Bible when Jesus would ask his disciples, ye of little faith, where did you doubt? Why? Doubt rises up when we allow fear to take over. But they continued, they continued to meet daily. To encourage one another. Amen. Learn to join as a family. To pray together. To study together. And, and stay in your word daily. Not every once in a while. If you want a great relationship with God. Seek him. Seek him. What does Matthew 6.33 say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Huh? Uh, uh, first seek. First, first seek. Seek is important. That See, we can't just seek him when we. I'm going to go back here and talk to Curry a minute. Y'all can follow me if you want to. You can't seek him just when you need him. Too often. Too often, we have a spiritual lottery going on. We'll only seek God when we need something. The rest of the time. Then we have the audacity. God, where are you at? Then we have the audacity. I don't feel God no more. Then we have the audacity. I don't know where God was when all this was going on. God was right where you left him, baby. Right where you left him, baby. Right where you left him. That's exactly where he was at. He went nowhere. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you ain't got to fight a battle that's not yours no more. It belongs to the Lord. Quit fighting. Quit walking in fear. Understand, if he be for you, what can come against you? Hey, somebody. 
I think we need to start an online movement. Amen. I, I believe that's I mean that's a trend of where the church is going today. We need to start an online movement. A movement. A movement. A movement. Somebody say amen. A movement. And I'm praying and I'm asking God now, God, what is it that we need to do besides just coming to a building and meeting? There has got to be. How many of y'all right now need something you can plug into? <sighs> seven days a week not just one day a week you need to plug into something seven days a week that you can get that little tidbit ever every day down in you amen get that spiritual heavenly deposited down into your spirit so so that you can move in mountains and you can say unto that mountain be thou removed and and not doubt in your heart amen and the church said Ooh, i believe with everything that is in me that we're living in a time right now. See the our, our, our ancestors. Whew, Francis, you can answer this one for me. See, Francis was raised in church. And I see her mama, and I ain't never met her mama. <laughs> the old folks would always say they never could understand how the two prophets would be able to see and be seen around the world at one time. Now we got internet. Elijah and Enoch will be seen around the world by internet. Y'all with me today? I got chills now thinking about it. How, how can this happen? In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. How can it happen? That fast. I believe if the enemy wants to use something for destruction, we ought to turn it around for the good of God. Amen? I, I believe that we need to figure a way to plug in and do an online movement. How, how do we start that? I'm glad you finally asked. I've been waiting. I've been up here all this time waiting on somebody to ask, and I'm glad you finally asked. How are we going to do this? You're going to take what you get from here, and you're going to share it. When you share it, it gets to get spread around. How many's got people, friends, family, and all that on your timeline that's out of the state? Amen? Out of the country. I got one, I think. Hallelujah. Number three, we got to hurry. Running out of time. Number three, how, how we're going to move in faith and not fear. We shine the light. We don't hide it. Amen. Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse 14 says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. During this time, when people are afraid, and they are, a lot of people living in fear right now. A lot of people living in panic right now. A lot of people living in unsuredness right now. Pastor, you're not afraid. I am absolutely 100% faith-driven, and no, I am not afraid. I am afraid. What, ha what if this happens? What if it does? Y'all with me today? I are, are we going to follow the kingdom, or are we going to follow our flesh? He says we are the light of this world. The world is looking to the church for answers. This is an opportunity for the church to be the church. This is an opportunity for us to walk in faith and not fear. Somebody say not afraid. Not going to live afraid. Not going not gonna to live afraid. Now watch this. If I go to Sam's and they say put a mask on, I'm going to put a mask on. If somebody wants to wear a mask, I'm not going to talk about you. But give me the freedom when I don't want to wear one not to talk about me. The church said, amen. I mean, 
I'm going to use what I call common sense. If I get around a whole lot of folks, I'm putting a mask on. Matter of fact, my daughter-in-law went and got me one personally made that says Papa T-Rex on it. Some of y'all will get that, and some of you don't understand. They say I got little T-Rex arms, so they call me T-Rex. So now I'm not just Papa no more. I'm Papa T-Rex, amen? All my grandkids, I, I, I can see this at my home going. Papa T-Rex is a good man, just couldn't reach much. <laughs> then we go with all the short jokes, you know? Ball jokes, short jokes, what does it matter? It's all short. I did have to prove to him I can reach over this pulpit. Amen. <laughs> See, most people don't know why they call this a pulpit. In the beginning, they call this a pulpit for a reason. That the minister is supposed to stand behind and pull people from the pits of hell. That's where he got his name. So I at least can reach over and pull something. Get it! <laughs> Grab it. <laughs> Amen. And the church said, we as a body of people are supposed to be hope dealers. We are to deal hope for the dying and depraved world that we live in. The church should be the one that is shining the brightest today. I know we get a lot of Stuff thrown on us that we have not asked for. We're to spread hope. There is hope in a dying world. There's hope in chaos. There's hope in all the mess that's going on. And the church said, our job is to spread love, the love of Christ. Amen? Our job is spreading life into a dying body. Can I tell you something? Maybe you're here today and you've been allowing fear to rise up and, and ruin, run your life. Can I tell you something? There's hope in Jesus. There is hope in Jesus. There's peace that surpasses human understanding in Christ. Understanding that if any one of us leaves, just like with Tony, I'm saddened that I lost a friend. I, I lost him here on earth. I know where he's at. He's not lost. I, 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 it's a saddened day for me to, to know that somebody I've spent 17 years with working now has gone home to be with the Lord, and I'm kind of mad. He got there before I did. Amen? I mean, it, it's a peace that, you know what, if, if, yes, and I understand what Paul meant when he said, to die is gain. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. I understand that's peace that surpasses all understanding. It don't make sense to this crazy, deprived world that we live in. What did the Bible say? We're pre we might be pressed down. Come on. We might be persecuted. Might be abandoned. But can I tell you something? I'm never going to be destroyed. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. I might be in the midst of a storm, but I'm going to find a rainbow in the middle of it. I'm going to go and find and look for it. I'm not going to get caught up in the storm. I'm going to hunt the rainbow that is in that storm. Because every storm has a rainbow. Some of you in this place today need to hear that. No matter what life may be throwing our way, can I tell you something? Don't get caught up in these numbers. Don't get caught up in all that. But be smart. Do things smart. Be wise. Be wise. And I know some of you are not going to like me right now, but it's okay. If they tell you you need to wear a mask, put one on. Quit being rebellious. Then when you get out, snatch it off, throw it in the seat of the truck or on the floorboard, kick it under the chair. It don't matter. Amen. You feel like you need to wear Put one on. Be wise. And don't go buy all the toilet paper up. I might need some. There's plenty of beans and rice to go around. I'm going to tell this story. I'm going to let us go. And, of course, it's a joke because 
Not many people go to heaven and come back and tell you about it because they get to heaven and they don't want to leave. Amen. This guy, he goes to heaven and he gets to heaven and he was actually a Presbyterian pastor. And he gets there and, and Peter meets him and Peter says, oh, well, you're a pastor of a Presbyterian church. Okay, he says, uh, kind of got a problem. We only got two rooms up here. No, no I ain't going to tell that joke. Anyway, he goes and he, he, he carries them in there and, and they open this big old feast room and everybody's in there having this big old feast and eating good. Man, I mean, who and he, and boy, and that, uh, like most pastors, he's like, oh, Lord, there's a chicken being sacrificed. It, it's Sunday. It's time to eat, boy. And, no, just kidding. And so he took him to hell. And they got to hell, and he says, I'm going to show you what you missed and all those people that you pulled out of hell, what they missed. Man, he opens up this door, and here they are, man. They got this big old feast table in there. Everybody's sitting around this, I mean, nice, beautiful table with all this, all this food everywhere. But they were skinny. They were skin and bones. And that Presbyterian preacher says, what's up with this? Got all that food and they skinny? Wait a minute, when we was in heaven, everybody was fat. And he said, yep. He said, there's one catch to all this right here. If you'll notice, all of their spoons are that long. He said, now let's go back to heaven. They get to heaven and opens the door and he says, now you see what they're doing with their spoons? They're feeding each other. That's why they're all healthy. They're feeding each other down there. They're greedy and they, they're trying to feed themselves and can't get it to their mouth. And now we're feeding each other. Sometimes we just need to feed each other. That's how. That's why he says forsake not the assembling of yourself. Because we need to feed each other. Well, I ain't been feeding nobody. Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. Sometimes just your presence feeds people. Amen. Sometimes just being around somebody, showing them love and, and showing them the things of life. Man, y'all. Sometimes I just need a hug from you. I don't need a word of wisdom. I don't need you to pray for me. I sometimes just need a hug. I just need somebody to say they love me. Better yet, there's sometimes I just need somebody to tell me they like me. Y'all ever had those weeks? Come on. Somebody say, we're not of this world. We're from a heavenly world. And we're, we're required to do things a little different. And that's feed each other. Amen. If, we'll, if everybody stand their feet for a moment, just give me just a moment of your time. I know your stomach's growling. I hear them. Hallelujah. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Right now, we're going to make a decision. That may impact not just our life, but our family's lives and those around us' life. We're going to make a decision that we're going to feed those around us spiritual food. Things that will change our life forever. We're going to make a decision that we're not just going to eat spiritually one time a week. And if that's you today, would you raise your hand and just keep it up for a minute? Father, I ask right now for every hand that is raised that you empower them and equip them. And we ask right now for your presence to manifest itself in our lives and those that are watching by live stream right now have your way Holy Spirit minister the only way you know how not a way that man may think and 
And I want everybody to raise their hand to heaven and receive this blessing today. Father, let your peace that surpasses all understanding reside on each one here represented in those that are watching right now fill their house fill their hearts fill each one of our lives lord and i thank you in advance i ask that you wrap your arms around janine and that family give them comfort that only you can give give them peace that only you can give and today we give you the praise and we give you the glory father we promise will not live afraid that we'll walk in your peace in Jesus name and if you receive that today give the Lord a hand clap of praise come on go ahead and praise him right now for for your peace and praise him right now for his love in your life amen I love you, and I'll see you Wednesday night at 7. <laughs>